I went to Indiana University for two years. That was um, my second try at college. Uh, my first was as a, a liberal arts right out of high school program, and I was not at all interested. Uh, the only class that I got an A in was music appreciation. So a few years off working, I finally decided that I would return to music. And yes, in that period of time, I listened to, to tons of records. Uh, the radio stations coming out of New York City at the time were playing all a great variety of adventurous music. I heard the music of uh, Honegger and Henze and Tippett and uh, composers you do not hear on, on radio today. So I really, uh, I, I, I credit <laughs> being that close to New York and having those three major radio stations uh, and the range of music that they played for, uh, for my finding the music that really got me interested enough uh, to learn the bass to a really um, professional level. And then, and of course, that music also got me interested in composing. I wanted to be a composer. First and foremost, that's what my, because I thought the composer is the creator. And I liked the idea of the creative aspect of music. But that uh, was not a career path for me. So after my two years as a composition major at Indiana, I decided that I would put all my eggs in the bass playing basket and finally become a bass major. So at the ripe old age of 27, I enrolled in, at Boston Conservatory to complete a bachelor's degree as a performance major. And luckily, two years studying there, practicing like a demon, I was uh, able to uh, win a fellowship at Tanglewood. And a funny story about my audition was uh, I played for Gunther Schuller. And I get ready to set up and I hand him a vellum copy, original copy of a piece of music that I wrote for, for solo double bass, which is going to be my contemporary music selection on the audition, which I, I hoped would impress him. And he was looking over my resume and he said, he looks up and he says, what are you doing 29 years old and a senior at Boston Conservatory? <laughs> Which is an understandable question, given how young people tend to move through these things. And the only thing I could say was, I'm a late bloomer. So once I graduated, I, had, I was in contact with many of the bass players in the Boston Symphony, as one is as a, as a Tanglewood Fellow and got all the benefits of, of uh, their expertise and everything that Tanglewood has to offer. Well, having started the instrument so late and making it into the Milwaukee Symphony, which was a step higher than I ever thought I might achieve, being so far behind others in the process, I thought, I can stay in Milwaukee. This is a this is a great this is a fine orchestra for me, and and then the Boston Symphony audition opened up. It was a a dark week for Milwaukee. It wasn't that long since my last audition, so I was still fairly audition ready. Plus, I thought play in Boston Symphony Hall. Yeah, I, I got to shoot for that. So. Uh, those three things led me to go ahead and take the audition. And luckily, I, uh, I prevailed um, from what I found out later was 55 people to come and play a preliminary audition. So I felt ecstatic that I had no right to achieve this level of professionalism given my late start. So I was overwhelmed, and every day I go on the stage and I do this. Yep, it's true. You know, new music is my lifeblood. I have to say that without having found the music of, of Henze, Dutieu, Tippett, uh, Maxwell Davies, Bertwistle, 
uh, Berg. Um, oh, that, uh, that list is, is enormous, way too enormous for how little people know of them. Uh, without having heard that music, uh, today I would not be a classical musician. There is no way I'm absolutely convinced of that. Uh, so I know that there are other ears out there interested in hearing something outside of the, the, the uh, standard repertoire. Uh, but now they're not necessarily getting the opportunity to experience it in an everyday, in an everyday turn the radio on way. You have to go onto the internet and seek it. Hopefully that's being done. Hopefully people are finding those pieces and looking for them on concert programs in their own cities. I think it was about my fifth year I said, uh, oh, I can take on something else. So I started taking up tennis seriously. And I had played a number of times as a kid. Like, like anyone else, when the weather's nice and there's a racket in the closet, you go out and hit the ball once or twice a summer. But now we, uh, the orchestra, when the orchestra went on tour, there was a tennis playing contingent. And so, oh, you play tennis, great, bring your racket. Okay, I'll better get a racket. <laughs> and we played, and I wasn't, I wasn't very good, but it, it, it inspired me to get better so that I could keep up with the players in the, in the orchestra. So I began working, taking lessons seriously, working on the game, and one thing that playing the instrument, learning the instrument taught me was how to practice, how to get better at something how to review your own progress, how to problem solve, how to sense the physical things that you need to change. So I felt like, wow, playing the bass really helped me learn tennis. <laughs> because everything you bring to that process, you know you have to bring to another, any other endeavor that requires the same sort of physical dexterity. So over the years, I have competed, and uh, I have a few runner-up trophies, and um, one, two, three championship trophies from various uh, tournaments, two of which I won out in, in uh, Western Massachusetts during the summer. There was an open tennis tournament out there, and, and uh, players from the tri-state area uh, Vermont, Massachusetts, and New York would come to this tournament. So it was open to 18-year-olds, uh, ranked 50-year-olds, um, and uh, oddly enough, I, I won it twice. As far as new music and finding music that really inspired me to become uh, an orchestral musician, there's one moment in my, in my young past, you know, that stands out. I remember it. Um, if I have to say, if there was one moment, this is the single most important moment in my development as a musician. I was helping a friend um, paint an apartment. He was he had been given an attic studio to turn into a, 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 a painting space. He was a painter, and so I said, "Well, I'll help you. I'll help you put it together." And we were listening to the radio. I was painting an alcove, and, and, and a piece of music came on the radio that made my jaw drop. I had to stop what I was doing, and I think I still had the paint can in my hand as I sat down in front of the speaker, listening to Arthur Onega's Second Symphony for Strings. And this was when I realized this is the music that somehow I had been waiting to hear. <laughs>